Welcome to Today Pass. Stephanie is driving today. Stephanie is going to get a star taken away. <laughs> no, not taken away. Yeah. Okay. Hello and welcome to Today Pass. My name is Scott and here we like to have fun and make things as entertaining as possible. While you learn to drive from the comfort of your own home. Now in today's video we're going to be meeting Stephanie. Stephanie's doing her first ever mock test and she's super nervous. Let's see how she gets on. It's required of you on the test so mm -hmm. 20 minutes independent driving, uh, a manoeuvre. Mm -hmm. and possibly a controlled stop okay so everything that's required yep. from your real test uh, all the good points will be up here in green mm -hmm. all the minor faults will be up here in yellow and all the major faults or serious faults will be up here in red don't forget to give stephanie a thumbs up and subscribe for more mock tests from today pass so stephanie are you ready yes ready to fail <laughs> Take your time, do your voice, uh, your self-commentary, so everybody can learn from you, but I will be quiet as an examiner, okay? Mm -hmm. Drive on when you're ready. Stephanie has done amazing. She has done all of her observations, and she has done amazing and great. Rose, you're also great and amazing, and you're correct. Stephanie has done her all-round observations and off to an amazing start. I think I'm not quite used to with her having all these camera around. Puts the pressure on, doesn't it? Also, but but uh, anyway, that's really good because that makes me more focused. Mm-hmm. How about the high-rose jacket? No, that's nothing. Because your voice is still scored. Okay. <laughs> you, right. need, you need another voice. <laughs> All right. Maybe I just need a brighter jacket and yeah, I'll change my voice. Okay. So just follow the road ahead. Um, I'll give you directions for now. Stephanie, have your driving structure shown you how to wipe the window screens? So it looks like we might have a little bit of rain. Yep. And it's quite likely to be the same condition as my on the day of my exam. Okay. So I'll that's check. good. Yeah. Okay, Stephanie. Um, mm -hmm. There's a yellow line further down the road. Yep. When we get closer, I'm going to give you instructions to stop on the yellow line, okay? Okay. Well done, Stephanie. That's another star. You know how to do the wipers. So just after the black vehicle, there's a couple of dark vehicles here, just after Stephanie, just after. Okay, I'd like you to pull up and stop on the yellow line on the left and allow one car length from the vehicle in front, okay? So give yourself yeah. room to move away. All right, that will do. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Okay, so we're going to start your independent drive. We'll be using the sat nav and we're roughly going to be following it for 10, oh sorry, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so happy with that instruction? Yep. yep. Take your time when you're ready, drive on, and I'd like you to follow the sat nav, please. You will arrive at your destination at 1.02 p.m. Notice how Stephanie's demonstrating the all-round observations, showing the examiner that she knows what she needs to do before moving off safely. Yet, Stephanie doesn't waste any time after her last check to the most dangerous side, being the traffic, seeing it's clear, she gets going. And this is important because it's what the examiners want to see. Now, Stephanie receives a minor fault here. Have a look at the white car parked on the left. If we stop side by side, this will allow more space for the oncoming traffic. Yet Stephanie keeps pushing forwards, closer to the parked cars. The space between the front of our vehicle and the offside parked vehicle creates a bottleneck. Notice how the oncoming traffic is having to slow down and swerve around the front end of our vehicle. Had we stopped earlier, we would have been less likely to cause any impedance to the oncoming vehicles. This means we're not having to slow, stop or swerve the traffic if it's not necessary. The end of the road, turn right, B472 Joel Street.
Turn right. Okay, while we're waiting at this busy junction, let's take time to look at the vehicle behind us. Notice where it stopped. Would this impede traffic, causing any vehicle to slow, stop or swerve unnecessarily? These are the three S's, which result in a serious fault. Now the vehicle's noticed, it's moved forwards into a proper stopping position and allowing space for this vehicle to now turn right off of the main road traffic, increasing progress, which does create more road safety. Now as we enter into this busy road, take time to be patient. Ask yourself if you would walk out across the road. If you say yes, this is the perfect time to drive out. Watch the position and the movement of the vehicle in front. It started to signal left and done and now a wiggle. This is creating a diagonal angle for the vehicle to reverse back into the bay. If you've seen this and had the experience of noticing a vehicle's movement like this, seeing the signal, this will create more awareness. Hopefully you'll be able to plan by stopping early and allowing space for that vehicle. I think this is the quietest you've ever been, Stephanie. I'm shocked. Okay, would you be able to tell me? Yep. How would you know if there was a problem? After 200 footbrake? yards, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, A404. It doesn't feel road. spongy. It doesn't. It doesn't feel, feel spongy. spongy. And that means that there is a problem with your foot brake no, if it doesn't. It feel... doesn't feel spongy means okay. If it's feel, if it, if it feels spongy, then there is a fault, right? Lovely. Thank you yeah. very much. Okay, so the sat nav will repeat the direction, but just because I kind of talked over it, I'll just clarify that when you reach the roundabout, yep. yeah, you'll be turning around. Well done, Stephanie. You got that question correct. That's another star for you. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, A404, the road. Stephanie receives a minor fault here for undue hesitation. Notice how open this junction is with very good visibility. Would you have stopped? Do you feel like there's an opportunity to go now? Look at the vehicle's wheels that are exiting the roundabout. This shows you the direction of their travel. This can create a more informative way of making a decision if it's safe to emerge out. Another good way of making junctions simple and knowing when it's a safe time to drive out is by asking that classic question, would I have walked out? After 600 yards, Turn right, A4125, High Street. Right. On your driving test, there's two ways you can be asked to do your independent driving. This is roughly 20 minutes of your test. You may be asked to follow signs or use the sat-nav. On this occasion, Stephanie's using the sat-nav, and I find this is a good modification to the driving test. Listen now. After 300 yards, turn right, then turn left. If you feel that the sat-nav is the easiest way to do independent driving, write down in the comments below, sat-nav easy. I definitely feel this is the easiest and the best change to the modern driving test. We are now being given auditory directions and we can look down at the sat-nav to see the blue line and the amount of distance to our junction which is at the top part of the screen in the banner. Turn right, A4125, High Street, then turn left. So my top tip for sat-navs is to look at the top of the screen, see the banner, make sure that you notice 100 yards and prepare early. Turn left, Hallowell Road. Excellent mirror signals here for our next left turn which came up very shortly after our right turn. This road is incredibly narrow, so again, when we can't see into junctions, use an appropriate speed. Be ready to come to a slow and safe stop if necessary. Stephanie, I'd just like you to pull up on the left. Don't worry about the driveways on this occasion. On your driving test, your examiner will ask you to pull over and stop. They are looking to see that you do this safely by checking your mirrors accordingly and signaling if necessary. Okay, drive on when you're ready. Yep. 
It's common for the examiners to say, disregard drop curbs or ignore driveways. Sometimes they may refer to stopping on lines. If your examiner gives you these directions, they are not tricking you. Do your best, if it's safe to, to pull over and stop where the examiners asked you to. Stephanie, you're losing a star because you went too close to the st park, 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 car. park car. When it's safe, I'd like to show me how you wash the rear window using the wipers and washers. At the okay, end of the road, you. turn left, B469, Green Lane. Then, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, Maxwell Road. Turn left. Then, go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. Our sat-nav just gave us two different directions at the same time. We'll come back to that later. Notice the main road traffic's turning into the side road. Very slow and steady. This could be a good clue that there's no oncoming traffic. Now, did Stephanie remember her directions? Let's wait and see. Left. Left at the roundabout. Remember the banners at the top of the screen on the sat nav. Having a glance at this will show you how many yards away the turn is. So. What would you do on your driving test? Very quiet, Stephanie. What are you thinking about? Is that a problem? It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit different from. Uh, After normal. 90 yards. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit, Maxwell Road. Go left on the roundabout and take the first exit. Wow, Stephanie, how did you know that the car's um that the car was going to go straight? Well done, you get a star. That is a star well earned, and thank you, Lila. Knowing if a vehicle on your right at the roundabout is going to go straight is a useful tool to have. Looking at the wheels, as you may have heard me say earlier, is your guarantee of knowing where a vehicle is going to travel. So having a habit of looking at the vehicle's wheels is going to make you a more skillful driver and choose your times to proceed effectively. This car is equipped with state-of-the-art technology and a warning sensor that tells you that you've reached the speed limit. Did you hear that? Stephanie has slowed her speed to save her from failing her driving test. At the end of the road, turn right, A404, Rickmansworth Road. Right, right. Turn right. Would you help me help you by making comments down below about what you think of the angles here? Is it helping you to see the road clearly? And make a decision for yourself where it's a safe time to go at any junction on the videos. Your feedback is crucial for me to try and make the best videos possible for you. Well, just to break the silence, um, I I went to school in Rickmansworth. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm, local. Stephanie saw the big red monster. So she gets a... Oscar! <laughs> Oscar? <laughs> so we're doing Oscars now. A star, my love. A star! There After 200 go. yards, turn left, Copswood Way. Turn left.
After 200 yards, turn right, north gate. Turn right. find a convenient place to fill up on the left, please. Wonderful mirror checks here from Stephanie and signaling accordingly. She's looking for a convenient place and going long to where the raised curbs are. Excellent job. At the end of the road, turn left, A4180, Ducks Hill Road. Drive on when you're ready, please. Turn left, A4180, Ducks Hill Road. Right at the start of the exam, Stephanie requested that she go onto the 50 mile an hour road. We're about to turn left onto Ducks Hill Road. Look far ahead to see if you can see any speed change signs, and then if you see an increase, only increase in speed at the sign. The opposite for when you decrease. If you see ahead that there's a decrease in speed, make sure you slow down before you reach the sign so that when you reach the sign, you've achieved that speed limit. Stephanie does a fantastic job here, so we're just gonna fast forward through the long straight roads now. Stephanie, well that's the end of the independent drive. I'm going to give you directions from now on. Yep. There's a possibility the sat nav might say something soon, but just ignore it. I'll give you directions. After 300 from now yards, on. turn left, plow farm close, then you have reached your destination on your left. So what we're going to do is go into a car park. Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you where the car park is because it's a bit hard to see. So slow down a lot. See the sign for the restaurant on the left, the black sign here, Steakhouse. Yep. Signal left, it's here on the left. Take your time, it is a bit narrow. Okay, thank you very much. Go all the way to the back of the car park, please. So we're going to go all the way to the back of the car park. Yep, sure. And what I'd like to do at the back of the car park where there's more space is mm -hmm. choose any bay and drive forwards into the bay. So this is your forwards bay park exercise. Just take care, there's quite a large hole there. So just steer a tiny bit to the right for me. Just a tiny bit to the right. And just edge forwards for me, please. Slowly. Okay, all right. And just stop here for me. All right, thank you very much. So now choose any bay and drive forwards into one of the bays, please. You must complete the exercise within the lines, okay? Yep. Another 
Okay. Yep, I'm happy. All right, lovely. Thank you very much, Stephanie. I'd like you to reverse out towards the wooden fence on your left. So when you're ready, just reverse out to the left for me. Okay. Thank you. You can keep going over the bays there yep. if it's safe. There's no cars there, that's okay. We just want to leave the car yep. park. Okay, that hole's there again. So what I would suggest is possibly if you just go around it. Does that yep. make sense? So I know we're going to go a bit onto the opposite side of the road. Yep. But it is safe. There isn't any oncoming traffic and we've got good visibility. So just to avoid that hazard, mm -hmm. just drive a little bit around it here for me. That's brilliant. Thank you. And then I move back to the left. Yes, please. And then we're just going to follow through to the exit. And when you get to the main road, I'd like you to turn left. Left. Yes, please. Another outstanding job by Stephanie and she receives one more rose star because she managed to park first time in between the lines with no corrections. Now Stephanie receives a minor fault here because her back left hand tyre rolls over the large bit of pavement as we exit the car park. That's a minor fault. <laughs> okay Stephanie, take the next road on the left please. Just here. Thank you, Stephanie. Just follow the road ahead. Be careful when increasing your speed. Even if you feel like you've been holding up the traffic behind you, it's way more important to focus on what's coming up next. Stephanie receives a minor fault here for increasing her speed while going over a large speed bump. This is called car consideration and damages the vehicle. Okay, there's a roundabout coming up. I'd like you to turn right, third exit at the roundabout, please. Right foot exit. Yes, please. Stephanie decides to stop the vehicle on the roundabout when it's not necessary. We have traffic following closely behind and this is dangerous. Stephanie receives a serious fault. No need to stop here, Stephanie. Yeah. Okay. Car behind you. You might have felt me slightly touch the brake there. It's because you were steering into the roundabout quite a lot and you were going quite fast. So I had to make sure that we weren't going to hit the roundabout. Mm -hmm. But when I just tap the brake, mm -hmm. there's no need for you to stop the vehicle. Okay. And some of these speed bumps are very large. Do you remember before the speed bump? I didn't yeah. say anything, but 
flight, we're accelerating into the speed bumps. Why are the speed bumps there? Too fast. Well, what? Do I speed mean, to bumps... stop to stop drivers driving too fast. Mm, they're there to reduce the speed of traffic, yeah, mm -hmm. for road safety. Round about turn left, please. Left. Yes, please. How do you know when it's a safe time to drive out at any junction? If you've been paying attention, you might know the simplest way of judging when it's safe to drive out. Remember the question, would I walk out? Have you seen any occasions where you would have walked out? Stephanie might be feeling like she's being too hesitant Sometimes we need to be patient. Remember, would you walk out? Have a look. I wouldn't, would you? Stephanie's probably feeling like she's too impatient now. Notice the white vehicle on the right and she's driving out in front of this vehicle. Now that vehicle would have been affected and had to slow, stop or swerve. Hey Stephanie, you're going to have two roundabouts coming up. They're quite close to each other. Yep. At the first roundabout, I'd like you to turn left. And at the second roundabout, turn right. First left, second right. That's correct. Left, first. Yes, please. Second right. Yes, please. Right. Excellent observations from Stephanie here. She sees the indicator on the vehicle coming from the right. She now takes the opportunity to go as the other vehicles aren't moving. Well done. I get to take the next road on the left. Left. Mm -hmm. This turn is too wide. At the end of the road, turn right. Right. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Stephanie. Stephanie, you got Take the next road on the left, please. Left. Yeah. Just pull up behind the red car on the left for me, please. Don't worry too much about the yellow lines, but just try and get as close as you feel is safe to the red car. You don't have to get too close, okay? Mm-hmm. That's lovely, thank you. All right, and just switch your engine off and relax. Right, that's the end of Stephanie's mock test. Yep. And to go over the results, if anybody's interested, we're gonna do a full debrief. Mm -hmm. So please just check out Stephanie's debrief if you're interested to find out if she passed or failed. <laughs> and that will be just up here. So we'll see you there. Bye.